In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at um, one very important topic in accounting. It is subsidiary books and source documents. Subsidiary books and source documents. I want to believe that students are not just seeing this topic for the very first time. If you are an accounting student, I believe you must have gone through the topics that you are expected to cover under WIEC, JAM, and any accounting related um, exams. And you can bear with me witness that you cannot write any exams without a good knowledge of the partic this particular topic. So in today's lesson, we are going to take time to explain what um, subsidiary books, what subsidiary books is all about, and then the various source documents that you are expected to know. Now, the lesson objective for today's lesson number one, we are going to define and identify subsidiary books. We want to look at what this subsidiary book is all about, we want to define it, and then we, we identify this book because there are different books of account, but we have just few that we can call subsidiary books. So we want to define what subsidiary book is and then want to identify these various books. Then the second thing, I want to explain and state the various source documents. Though we have different source documents, but within the scope of this lesson, we are going to look at some, doc, some source documents that should go with the subsidiary books. And then we also represent subsidiary books and source documents on a table. We'll give the tabular representation of subsidiary books and the source document to, for, for it to be very easy for students to identify the source document that goes with a particular subsidiary book. And then the last one is that we'll answer related questions from the exam guide. Now, the, at the end of the lesson, we are going to measure our success if we've been able to achieve our objective. So our success criteria, number one, if we've been able to define and identify subsidiary books, if we've been able to explain and state the various source document, if we've been able to represent the subsidiary books and source document on a table, and finally, if we've been able to solve related questions from the exam guide. Very quickly, let's look at what subsidiary books, books are. Subsidiary books are books of original or prime entry used to make first entry of transaction before they are posted to the ledgers. Hence, before any entry can be made in the ledgers, it must first be recorded in the what? Subsidiary books. What do we what are we talking about? I said it is it is the book of original entry. Every transaction requires some level of record. You know, record is, is as important as accounting as a discipline. Because if you don't take proper record of transaction, there is, there, there is a tendency or there are tendencies that in the long run, you may not be able to, under, or to remember the nature of transaction. So we recommend strongly in accounting that recording should be very, very fundamental in every establishment. So, but if you want to record transactions, there are books that you have to, there are books that are recommended for certain class or classes of transaction. Now, some books are what we call principal books, while some are what we call subsidiary books. When we say a book is principal, we are trying to say that it is a prime book, a book where you have to record all other transactions. You know, when we say the principal of a school, the principal of a school is a man or a woman that coordinate all the activities that determine the actions of both students and teachers in that particular school. So bringing it to the palace of accounting, a principal book is what we call the ledger. I call it the book of books. I call it what? The book of books. If you take it to the palace of religion, when you talk about principal book, we're talking about the scripture. Because every life that you live, if you are a Christian, is centered on the, the, the Bible. If you take it to the palace of uh, 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 Muslims, you call it the Quran. The Quran also comprises of 
the, 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 the do's and the don'ts. The life of an average Muslim man is determined by the Quran. So in accounting, the ledger is a principal book. It's the book where all other books are what found. But the subsidiary books is the subset of what the ledger. It is the book where transactions are recorded first before they are what transferred to the what to the ledger. That's why they call it subsidiary. It is a subset. And then I say subsidiary books do not form part of the double entry. You know, so much has been said about double entry. We have said that double entry is a very fundamental principle in accounting that you cannot do, you cannot keep your books without it. But in this case, in subsidiary books, you, do, you may not observe the double entry principle because it does not go with for every debit entry, there will be a corresponding credit entry that has been the anthem of double entry. So in subsidiary books, you students are advised not to bother themselves about the double entry principle. It does not or it, it does not form part of the what double entry principle. Now let's quickly look at the divisions of subsidiary books. Subsidiary books are divided into the following. Number one is divided into says day, day book, what we call says day book or says journals. This is simply used to record daily sales on credit. Everything you sell on credit on daily basis is expected to be recorded in the sales day book. And then the number two, purchase day book or journals. This one is used to record purchase on credit on daily basis. Everything you buy on credit on daily basis is expected to be recorded in your what? Purchase day book or journal. And then sales returns or return inwards journals. You have sold out goods to your customers and your customers decide to return the ones that doesn't meet up to their expectation or what we call substandard goods. Once these goods are returned to you, you are expected to keep a book where items returned by your customers are supposed to be recorded on a daily basis. So the book that takes care of such transaction is called Return Inwards or Return Inwards Journals. And then the next one is what we call Purchase Returns or Return Outwards Day Book or Return Outwards Journals. This one, what happened to Peter must happen to Paul in accounting because it's always a, a transaction, it's always a discipline that is between two parties. As your customers are returning it back to you, you may not consume them because you have received it from your customers. What you do is to package it and return it back to your supplier. That's the truth. If you are not into manufacturing, if you are not a manufacturer, they are into buying and selling. You went to, to the market to buy bags of, um, of shoes. Normally, a shoe is supposed to come in pairs, left and right. And then when you get to your shop, you discover that one full bag of the shoe is left, left, left. Even if you have you mean sold it out to your customers. Now, them taking it to the destination of their business, they discover that one bag is left. They will return it to you. Now, once they return it to you, it becomes a return inward because it's coming into your business. But what can you do with it? You, you cannot do anything with the bag. What you need to do is to return it back to the people or their own supplier. So when your customer returns to you, you have you record it in your return inwards book. When you return this same item to the people you bought it from, it becomes return at worst. So why do we have to use sales and purchase to describe it? We call it sales return because it has to come as a result of sales. And then we call the second one purchase return because it has to it has to it happens as a result of what purchase. And then the last, the second to the last one is what we call the journal, the general journal or principal journal or journal proper. This is what we call a multiple book. This one is used to record different transactions. Journal can be used to correct errors. Journals can be used to record assets and um, um, sales of assets and um, purchase of assets. Now, it has a description, it has narration, it has date, and it also has amount. And the last but not the least is what? The cash book that is used to record cash receipt and cash payment. 
So these are the various divisions of what we call subsidiary books. They are collectively called subsidiary books because they form part of the ledger. They are books where transactions are recorded first before they are transferred to the ledger. Having looked at subsidiary books, let us quickly consider what I call source documents. This is where they will say that accountants are very critical because accounting is a discipline that deals with people's sweat. You cannot, somebody cannot hand over one billion naira under your control and you just wake up one morning to manage it. You must be very, very critical. You must be very, very objective. That is why source document is something that we don't take it, we don't, we don't joke, we don't toy with it in accounting. It shows what we call documentary or objective evidence or proofs of a transaction. We say source document, they are documentary or objective evidence or proofs of a transaction. I gave you 50,000 to go and pay a school fees. How am I sure that even if you are my son, you actually paid the school fees? When you pay the school fees, the school is expected to issue out a receipt to you that you, they have received that money. Now, as a responsible son, you come back to your father and say, Daddy, thank you, I have made the school fees. This is the receipt. That receipt is what proves that you have actually paid the school fees. That is what we call document, source document. So every transaction must come with what we call documentary or objective evidence. To, to substantiate or authenticate the transaction. That transaction must be proved beyond reasonable doubt that it actually took place. So I said that source documents are documentary or objective evidence or proofs of a what transaction. All entries in the book must be supported by documentary evidence. Hence, comma, source document substantiate or authenticate the reality of a transaction. They prove detailed information for the preparations of their books. So if I'm preparing subsidiary books, what will actually help me to prepare a very reliable subsidiary books is what we call the source document. Because if, for instance, I'm preparing sales day book, and then you are telling me, uh, okay, sir, I bought, okay, we sold out um, five carton of Indomie at this. I'll be looking at you. We sold out 10 cartons of Indomie. Once you are done with your, 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 the breakdown of sales, I will now ask you, what, are the, what, what is the evidence? Please, the evidence. If you're not able to show evidence, how do you want me to believe you that you actually sold out 10 cartons? How am I sure that you're not lying? Because this, the, the society is such that if we don't come up with this concept, it's going to, it's going to affect the, the, the reliable nature of the statement that the interested parties are looking for. This statement, this financial statement that we are preparing, is not just for our personal consumption. There are people who are interested in what we are doing. People that want to invest, they want to see what you are doing. So we want to be very sure that the information you are giving us is reliable enough. So objective, so source document is the, they are the document that can give us such guarantee. Now, the next thing we want to look at now is the classification. We have just a few um, source documents that we are going to look at under this lesson. Number one, the invoice. Number two, the credit notes. Number three, debit notes. Number four, petty cash voucher. Number five, statement of account. And then the last but not the least is what? Receipt. Very quickly, we are going to look at the brief definition of each of these. Let's start with invoice. We said the invoice set out the full details of goods sent by the supplier to the buyer, stating the following. Number one, every good invoice must come with the quantity. If you are giving, if you are showing an invoice, that invoice must spell out the quantity of goods that is purchased. Two, the price of each of the goods or the, the, the price of the goods. Three, the discount that is given. You know, the discount that is given, it, it can be cash discount. It can be what? Trade discount. But since these transactions are basically on credit, then it's always trade discount. And then the last but not the least is terms of payment. When are you going to make this payment? 
what are what is the agreement so a, an invoice will is a document that is sent that is sent by the supplier to this to the buyer stating these few qualities quantity price discount and what terms of payment the next one is what we call the credit note the credit note this is a document sent by the seller to the customer for reduction in the amount owed by him it arises because some goods are damaged or not supplied as recorded or there has been an overcharge on goods return to avoid confusion it must be printed in red it can be viewed from the following perspective now let me bring this definition home when we talk about credit note we are talking about a document that is sent it it must it must be it must be printed in red why do we need to send this credit we need to send this credit note because in the process of trying to package your pro your, your product some some the, some of the goods can be damaged or they can overcharge you once you are overcharged the, the the seller has a lot of customer he or she is attending to so when he is doing the packaging some of your products can be damaged in the process sometimes he or she can skip some of your products or he or she can can he can overcharge some of the, some of your products so when when the the supplier discovers this that you have been overcharged then he has to send you a credit note now this credit note that is sent to you is just to tell you that CEO, we are still owing you the money that you actually gave us you the, the goods we give you we gave you the goods we are not up to the money that you pay us so they that we are to refund you part of the payment so in other words called credit note a refund note by the supplier the supplier is under obligation to return some money to the what to the customer and then it can also be viewed in two ways it can be viewed in two ways it can be credit note received from suppliers and credit note issued to what customers as your supplier is doing that to you you also you are expected to do the same to your customer because as they are coming as you are going to buy people are also coming to what buy from you so credit note basically can be what received from suppliers and it can also be issued to what customers the, the meaning remains the same where whether it's from the angle of the supplier or from your own angle the next thing is what we call the debit note. this debit note is more like a direct opposite of what um, is direct op 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 opposite of what um, credit note so this document is sent by the seller to the buyer to correct and on that what charge or when goods are not charged on the invoice in the first instance it was an overcharge in this instance now it is what on that charge in this case the supplier is 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 worst off he's is the one that need to be refunded not you you see the, when he was doing the packaging he was doing the packaging of the goods he mistakenly packaged an item that he didn't um he didn't charge you so now by the time you now left the the company and then they were now looking at you know the the transaction that has transpired they now discover that chai we actually gave this person goods what so 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 but we didn't collect money that is an undercharge so what they will quickly do is to send you a debit note reminding you that please you have to still pay us some money you need to still do what pay us some money and then i said the buyer can also use it to claim an overcharge or for items returned to the to a seller it is sent to customers to increase their indebtedness so why they are sending you debit notes you can also send that debt you can also send this debit note to your own customers too yes you can send it to your customers to increase their indebtedness one of the things that can give back to this is what we call um and we, we, we when when um, the, your customer if you have maybe an agreement on cash discount you say if you can pay so 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 amount within so 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 period then this is what you are going to pay if this person is unable to pay you if that at that point 
the, the original arrangement has changed. So he, the person need to pay the original amount that the person was supposed to pay. So basically, debit note will help you to correct such um, undercharge. And then there's what we call the petty cash voucher. You know, petty cash book is a book that is prepared under what we call the impress system. This is one system that has, you know, it has given birth to a whole lot of manipulations because the petty cashier is not giving specification on what to do with the money. That is why they call it a float. So, but what the petty cashier need to do is to prepare a voucher that will spell out each of the transactions, um, that will spell out what the money is spent upon. All the minor expenses that are supposed to, that the money is supposed to expense on, those expenses are supp supposed to come with receipt that will now form what we call the voucher. So at the end of the period, the petty cashier needs to submit petty cash voucher to the main cashier. It will spell out everything that has been spent. So the petty cashier simply covers payment credited toward the petty cash book. And then the next one is what we call statement of account. This is a statement sent by the seller to the buyer at the regular intervals, usually showing credit and details of the account and the balance due. It's a statement of account. This is basically done by the bank. The bank will always send you what we call statement of account at the end of the, the, the period. It can be one month, it can be two months, it can be three months, depending on your request and the policy of the bank. But at least no bank is expected to keep your statement of account for more than one month. You're supposed to have an idea of what has transpired within the period. So the statement will show you what has happened, how much you have deposited how much you have withdrawn how much you have spent and how much is still remaining in your account and then we we also talked about the table that will now show us a clear picture of this haven't explained each of these source document let us now look at the table that will now bring the message home you see we see if you check the screen you see subsidiary books and you see source document. Now, for every subsidiary book, there is a particular source document that can substantiate or that can authenticate or that can prove that this particular transaction takes place. Let's start with purchase day book. Remember, we have said purchase day book is used to record daily purchase on what? Credit. So, what, what can actually prove that we have We've sold our goods on credit. Number one, we have what we call incoming invoices. Whenever you, have, you are going to buy or you have gone to buy, there are things that the, the supplier is supposed to give you. One of them is what we call the invoice. We have spelled out that invoice is important. It will spell out the quantity, spell out the price, spell out the terms of payment. Now, in this case, this incoming invoice is the one you are bringing to the shop. They have to show you what you have bought and then the, the price of each of them. And then the debit note. The debit note is what we just explained that your supplier will send to you to tell you that you have been under charge. And then the next one is sales day book. The sales day book is what you have sold out. You know, it represents transactions on credit, daily sales on what? Credit. And then outgoing invoices. As you receive invoice, we call it incoming. Now that you are giving invoice, it is called what? Outgoing invoices. And then, in the first instance, it was debit note received. This time around, it is debit note issued because you are the one that is giving the, um, the debit note to your customer. And then the next one is what we call return at worst book. Goods that you have returned back to your supplier. There, was, there must be need for a document to substantiate that transaction. And the only document that we need to that regard or to that effect is what we call incoming credit notes. Now, whenever you return goods to your supplier, that the value of that goods must be given to you. If I return a bag of cement to the shop where I bought for 10 bags of cement from and I return one, maybe let me assume 10 bags of cement one one thousand ten thousand. Once I return one back, that one thousand naira should be given back to me. 
So that that what will happen is that sometimes when you return, the supplier may not have the cash. So, but what we actually keep or sustain that claim is what we call the incoming credit note. So the incoming credit note is going to sustain the claim that you are entitled to one thousand naira as at when the the supplier is ready to pay you. So as far as they give you that credit note, you'll be rest assured that your 1,000 Naira is intact. So credit note goes with what? Return at what's book. And then the next one is sales return book. Sales return book. This one now is the goods that, that your customer return to you. The goods that your customer does what? Return to you. And once they return that goods to you, as long as you receive credit note from your supplier, you are supposed to send credit note to your what? Buyer or your customer. So you send credit note out, telling them that I am going to refund you the value of these goods return back to me. And then the second to the last is what we call the cash book. The cash book has a whole lot of objective evidence, which is called the source document. We have the till slips. We have the incoming checks, we have receipt, we have what we call the check counterfeits. Now, all of these are various um, objective evidence that goes with the cash book. And then the last but not the least is what we call the petty cash book, which I have stated earlier that it goes with what? The petty cash voucher. Now, having looked at this, there is need for us to now look at how to prepare this um, subsidiary books. Remember, our topic is subsidiary books. Now, but before then, I want to say something. I want to say that subsidiary books and source document, they go together. Subsidiary books and source document, they, do, they go together. Now, what I mean is that for every time there is a subsidiary books, there must be a subsidiary there must be a source document that will substantiate such a claim so don't don't get it twisted subsidiary and source document is not an account on its own but subsidiary books are account that one or books that one needs to do what to prepare now we will quickly take we'll quickly take um some questions from our exam guide that will really really bring the message home you know it is it, is one thing to learn a particular topic is another thing to apply that topic on practical questions and the essence of the lesson is not just to present a lesson but the essence is just to prepare your mind to prepare you adequately for accounting related exams Wayek, West African uh, Examination, NECO, JAM, and the likes. So our focus is not just to teach you, but just to, to, to empower your mind to be able to answer accounting-related questions, especially on the subject or the topic, um, or the, the, the topic at hand. Now, if you click on your exam guide, you see options for subjects, and then account is already clicked. That's where we are, financial accounting. Then when, it, when, it goes, when it, you get to the year, we have different years there, but I choose random because it's going to connect all the questions that are under this particular topic in all the years. We recommend and or advise that if you are looking for a particular year, at this point you can choose the year that you are interested in. And then the, interest, the, the topics of interest is already, choose, is already chosen. That is a subsidiary books and source document. I haven't done that. You go straight to your get started and then the questions will just pop up. Now, the first question here is said, in which ledger is the account of Yao a debtor found? Now, let me, quick, let me illustrate something on the board. When we talk about ledger, I said earlier, like I said from the beginning, the ledger is a principal book. It contains all other accounts. Now, an account... An account has two broad division. Two broad division. What we call the personal and the what? The in personal. It has two broad division. The personal and the what? The in personal. Now, this personal account can also be divided into two. We have 
debtors and we have creditors. Now, what we mean by personal account, we are talking about account that is open in the name of an individual. So the only time when an account is open in the name of an individual is either when we buy on credit or when somebody buy on credit from us. That's only two instances. If you are buying on cash, there is no need for you to record the person from where from which you are buying the from from the, from the person you are buying the, the item. You don't need the person's details because you have paid. The contract will end at that point. But as long as you've not been able to pay the person, there is need for you to keep record. That is why we have personal account. You see the likes of Messi's account, you see John's account, Peter's account, these are what personal account and they can either be creditors people we have gone to buy on credit from or they can be debtors people that buy on credit from us and then this other side is divided into two as well real account and what we call nominal account now this real account is actually account open for what asset basically asset why this open for expenses and what income so if we've been able to, 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 to draft this, then it will be very simple to answer this question. They said, in which ledger is the account of Yao a debtor found? You, you and I know that um, Yao is a name of a person. Is a name of a person. But since they said the person is a debtor, that means this is somebody that is owing us. How did the person owe us? The person came and bought something on credit. So it cannot be general ledger. It cannot be purchased because we didn't go to buy. Instead, this person came to buy from us. So it's going to be in the word says ledger. So it's going to be in the word says ledger. So the answer is C. It is only in the says ledger that you can find the name of Yao as a what? A debtor. Now, they said entries in the purchases journals are transferred, are transferred to what? To the dash. Purchase journal, we have sell. It is simply the book that is open for purchases. So, when we are done with the preparation of purchase, or the, or the amount inside purchase need to be transferred, it cannot be receivable account. Cannot be payable account, cannot be private ledger. It's going to be what? General what? Ledger. And then let's take the second to the last question. Which of the following is both a subsidiary book and a ledger? Now, if you are looking for the, if you are watching the video for the very first time, we had some, we have some um, lessons on, um, on cash book. If you go to that lesson, you will see we have explained what uh, a cash book is. And we said a cash book is the only book that serves in dual what purposes. It, can, it serves as the, um, the, it serves as a subsidiary books and it also serves as a what? A ledger. So the answer there is what? A. And then let's take the last question. The last question said, books of account are opened by means of a dash. Books of account are opened by means of a dash, return inwards journals, principal journals, sales journals, purchases journals. It is opened by means of a principal journal. This is a book that contains all the books. All right, so having, take, having looked at some, some related questions, I want to refresh our mind on what we have done so far. We have defined subsidiary books as books of prime entry or book of original entry where transactions are recorded before they are posted to the ledger. And then we have said it is divided, the subsidiary book is divided into what? Um, sales day book, purchase day book, return inwards journals, return outwards journals, um, cash book, and then journals proper. These are various div divisions. And then we also look at what we call subs, um, source document. We said source documents are objective evidence or what we call documentary evidence, a substantiate transaction or authenticated transaction. And then we looked at some few, um, we look at some few uh, categories or classification. We have the invoice, debit notes, 
credit notes, statement of account, and then petty cash voucher. And then we also define each of them and we explain how each of them can actually be used to represent transactions. And then we give a table that will tell us what should be expected when a purchase um, day book is prepared. We say when you are preparing purchase day book, you have what we call incoming invoice and then deb incoming debit note. When you are preparing um, sales day book, we have what we call outgoing invoice and then we have um, outgoing um, um, debit note. So, but if you go down, you begin to see um, in, um, return outwards. We said when you return goods, they are supposed to send you what we call return out. When you return goods back to your supplier, they are supposed to send what we call credit note. And when your own um, customer return goods back to you, you are supposed to send them credit note. So we say credit note sent out and credit note what receive. And then petty cash book is goes with what petty cash voucher. And then we've been able to take some related questions from our exam guide. <laughs>